Things looked bad for Leo Frank. He had been convicted in 1913 of the sexual assault and murder of a 13-year-old girl who worked in his Atlanta pencil factory. Mobs wanted his blood and some of George's uglier elements wanted them to get it. But Leo Frank had one thing going for him. His Augusta attorney, William Marcellus Howard, and Howard was a remarkable ally. A University of Georgia graduate and former state solicitor for North Georgia, Howard ran for Congress and won re-election six times. The consensus of history is that Frank, a Jew from New York, was the victim of a wave of anti-Semitism so strong it made a Deep South jury of white men do the unbelievable, except the word of a black man, a janitor named Jim Conley, that Frank was guilty of the death of little Mary Fagan. Frank was convicted quickly. The only question seemed to be who would get him first, the state executioner or a lynch mob? Howard was the counsel brought in to try to convince Governor John Slayton to commute Frank's death sentence. As an old prosecutor, Howard knew how to do that. He hammered the prosecution's case against Frank. He found 19 discrepancies in the trial testimony, and he pretty much convinced everyone that the main witness against Leo Frank, Jim Connolly, the custodian or janitor in the pencil factory, might have been the one who actually perpetrated the murder. What happened? I'll tell you about that when we get back. Augusta attorney William Howard convinced the crowd that there were many discrepancies in the prosecution against Leo Frank. He persuaded them and most importantly, he persuaded Governor John Slayton. After much soul searching, Slayton reached a decision. In one of the more principled and politically courageous decisions in Georgia history, Slayton considered the evidence and Howard's argument. He visited the murder scene, and then he commuted Leo Frank's death sentence to life in prison where a future appeal might free him. It was not a publicly popular position. The governor told his wife that he thought he himself might be killed. It didn't come to that, although mobs did converge on the Georgia governor's mansion. The governor left office soon after the decision and he and his wife moved out of Georgia, not to return for a decade. Leo Frank was spirited out of the Atlanta prison tower and taken to the state prison farm in Milledgeville, but hatred followed him there. A caravan of cars from Fagan's Marietta, Georgia hometown drove to Middle Georgia, overpowered the guards of the minimum security facility, brought Frank back to Cobb County and hung him from a small oak tree on the property of a former sheriff. They were never caught nor punished, but posterity has damned them as the cowardly murderers they were. Not so Governor John Slate. Posterity has given him praise for the principled stand that he made. Posterity, however, has seemed to have forgotten a little bit about William Marcellus Howard, the Augusta attorney who gave him the information to make that principled stand. For more of Kirby's Augusta, subscribe to us on YouTube or check us out on AugustaChronicle.com.